welcome to another episode of Behind the Message, where we take a behind-the-scenes look at the prayer and preparation that goes into messages shared at Open Door Church here in Eastern North Carolina. I'm your host, Michael Chandler, and I want to encourage you, wherever you listen or watch this content, hit subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. And I'd also love to invite you to rate or write a review. Uh, That would mean so much to us. And if this content is helpful to you, we'd love to ask you to share about it on social media uh, simply because it helps us get the word out about the conversations that we're having on the podcast. We think they're important and that they have the potential to help a lot of people. In this month's episode, I'm joined by members of our teaching team, Pastor Aaron Kennedy and Pastor Sean Reed, as we discuss the message series, Imago Day. And if you missed any part of this series, hit pause on this jump on the open door app to catch up well let's jump into the conversation all right so first up a question from one of our listeners as fathers what is one thing you each hope that your children believe about god as a direct result of the way you loved and parented them wow hey great question (laughs) that's a great question (laughs) great question Sean, you first. Really? Uh, <laughs> that our Heavenly Father is a better dad than I am? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I can't express, like, how much it means to me to have, you know, children who do pursue God for themselves. I, my heart for them is that they aren't, like, just legalistic or religious yeah. in a sense in a in the negative sense of what right. that can be well, i mean i want them to <laughs> care for widows orphans and take care mm-hmm. of the poor and all that stuff but i want them to do it from a right place I, w- I want them to live committed to the kingdom but i want it to be because they understand that it's from this place of love this foundation of light you can have this great relationship yeah. with your heavenly father um and i just i spent 15 years in it like being saved and it took me 15 years to really get to a point to where it was like I really understood that God wasn't like angry (laughs) at me and wasn't still looking for me to prove or earn this relationship with him and it it was awful you know uh, I mean it was great when I found out but it was bad because I stayed bound for that long so I would want my kids to understand you know at the end of the day, like God, the father loves you in a way that's so welcoming and inviting and it's very personable, you know? Yeah. I'll add on to that. I've got a story. <laughs> An example. <laughs> um, it's one of those dad moments where they take the knife and just stab it in your heart. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're potty training my oldest son. And uh, so, I mean, he, he did what he was supposed to mm-hmm. and uh and so we we're like oh you know that's awesome buddy and so the next day he come he comes downstairs and he goes mommy daddy do you like me now because i went to the bathroom on the potty <laughs> and i was like goodness ah yeah but i was like okay we're going to use this moment yeah because if there's one thing i want him to know and, and i told him this i said listen buddy Mommy and Daddy love you no matter what you do. Yes. Whether you poop on the potty or not, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to love you either way, and I'm going to like you either yeah. way. And so I, I think uh, kind of similar to what you said, mm-hmm. I, I hope uh, our kids get that, because it's taken me a long time, and I'm still in the process of learning that yep. it is. I don't have to earn any acceptance from God that He uh, He loves me because He made me. Mm-hmm. And uh and nothing's going to change that. Yeah. And so I, that's what I want my kids to, to learn, mm-hmm. among many other things. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I would just say probably one of the most freeing moments in my life, and it really came through the relationship with my dad and I. One of my dad's greatest um, regrets was how he parented through a really hard season of ministry. And uh, he, he, you know, I was – I was crazy during some of my teenage years. When I say that, I lived a very lascivious life and, and did some stuff before mm-hmm. uh, I came back to Jesus. <clears throat> and my dad, it was interesting because my dad would always blame that season of my life on how he parented through mm-hmm. a season that was difficult in the church. Mm-hmm. And this is how legacy works. 
And uh, and I remember having a very strong conversation with him. When I mean that, it was a very heated conversation with him because I was like, Dad, you got to stop blaming yourself because that was the season that God revealed himself to me. Mm. And uh, And what I recognized in that moment is that I was grateful for my dad's heart, but I also saw how he accepted a responsibility that was not fully his to accept. Mm-hmm. And I recognized from that moment on, my job was not to be Jesus to Wesley and David, but to introduce Jesus to Wesley and David. Mm-hmm. And I think that you know, the greatest joy of my life is introducing my kids to the true authentic Christ. Mm-hmm and really walking in a way in which they know that I am not that representation. Like, I mean, Mm -hmm. there's going to be moments that I fall dreadfully short. And Mm so for me as a parent, I I want to model for them that they hear sorry from me quite often Mm -hmm. and that when I do make a mistake, that I'm quick to make sure that they don't coincide that with the way the Heavenly Father looks at them. Uh, And so, you know, that's just kind of how legacy works is that, you know, it's very important not to judge where we come from, Mm -hmm. but to learn from it, too, and to recognize that, you know, that's why we're in generational houses. That's why first generation Christians, you're building something new. And so there's going to be challenges. But it's important for us as parents to know we're stewarding our kids. We're not the answer for them. And uh, that's a big deal. That's good. I love that. So email us your questions at behind the message at open door church dot com. That's a deep we, question. That's a great was, question. It was actually really great. Yeah. I didn't even know it was coming. And I was <laughs> yes. like, I just like, Surprise. <laughs> Send us your question <laughs> and uh, we'll pick one and answer it during next month's yeah. episode. All right. So we're gonna be talking about the first four weeks of our series Imago Day. Imago Day. <laughs> and uh, Imago Day is the Latin translation of image of god Mm. and so in this series we've been talking about how we were created in god's image which means which means we are god's image bearers Mm -hmm. we reflect him and ultimately we've been asking how does that impact our daily lives Mm -hmm. or another way i think we could say say that would be what does an imago day lifestyle look like Mm. i like that Mm -hmm. what are some defining attributes of that kind of lifestyle. And that's what we've been talking about through this series. Part one, uh, we introduced the idea that we are carriers of the image of God. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you made this point in that series, and I think it's really the cornerstone, it's really the foundation of the series that how we live matters. Mm -hmm. If I carry the image of God, then the decisions that I make, um, how I make those, how I execute those decisions, what I say, and what I love that you pointed out, how I say it, reflects the image of God. You said, or you read from uh, 1 Corinthians 6, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Mm -hmm. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So let's talk about, um, just to to reiterate what I just said, I want to talk about one of my favorite parts of your message that first week, that it matters that we declare God's truth, but it also matters that we do it in God's tone. Mm -hmm. Mm. So let's talk about that aspect, because I think it's easy, or it can be easier, it feels like, to be loud about the truth and forget that uh, God is also very concerned with how I say the truth. Yeah, I think one of the things I said during that message was uh, we've got to be careful about our convenient convictions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of times instead of us aligning our our truth to the Bible, we're trying to get the Bible to align to our truth. And so, therefore, we, we get on um, some stumps mm-hmm. because it just – happens to align with our thought process mm-hmm. on life and culture and then it, it kind of fuels the anger if mm-hmm. you will you know I think I think this is the deal man is that we've got to recognize that we are different so the world is going to hate us mm-hmm. And I don't think that the church is used to that type of language in America. I no, think yeah. you know right. worldwide they get it mm-hmm. N- nationally we do not and so we've I said this at a pastor's conference just recently. I said, we've got to get a whole lot more comfortable with criticism. 
and then recognize that when we're criticized, we don't get to respond like the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, in this, in this past season, that's what's concerned me is that our response to wrong has sounded just as wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's because we're using the Word of God many times. I mean, sometimes. I, I think sometimes we're just not. Sometimes we're just sharing our opinion yeah, on opinion. life. But when we do use it, we can have a tendency to be angry about it in tone. And when we come to the image bearer of God, yes, all of us as mankind, and I think you did an amazing job in part two. We're going to get to it. That was a mind-blowing message, okay? So we carry His image. But one of the things that is distinctive about the garden when that, you know, we've been journeying around Genesis 1, is that the Holy Spirit was present in the beginning. So no one can carry the full image of God unless the whole person of God is in them. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, so we don't just bear like a reflection of his image and a type and shadow. We're meant to carry the fullness of who he is in the earth. Mm-hmm. That can only come through the personal Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And when we think about the personal Holy Spirit, how does he sound? Mm-hmm. You know, it drives me bananas when people say, well, God slapped me this morning. I was like, no, he didn't. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Stop. Yeah. You're misrepresenting who he is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> you know, like, no, what, what, what to, the Holy Spirit's gentle. Yeah. He is fierce, but he's never mm-hmm. one that asserts his authority. Right. He's yeah. one that invites us to surrender to mm-hmm. him. He's a gentleman, mm-hmm. not, not in the fact that he won't get in your mess, but mm-hmm. in the fact that his tone is never loud or mm-hmm. obnoxious. Most of what we read in 1 Corinthians is Paul addressing the lack of tone in the church that reflected the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So anyway, man, when we start thinking about those things, we got to recognize that, that the way we say the truth is the greatest evidence of love, mm-hmm. and it reveals our motivation. Mm-hmm. Tone reveals your motivation. That's really good. You know, so, Selah. Yeah. You like that? I just I, went, I, I went, I, I went I, Hebrew. Honestly, you <laughs> I, I loved every bit of that. I, I don't think that anything was wrong in there. I, I look at it, and I'm like, it just makes me think that before I speak, and just, uh, you know, not too long ago, I think uh, Pastor Lauren and Gina were doing a series about emotional intelligence i think they were teaching Uh on instagram or something like that and one of the things that i thought about in that concept is that they're trying to teach a before you react to just whatever you sense in the physical you need to allow yourself to process it breathe first before you let it out because Mm -hmm. without giving that pause you you will automatically play whatever you you sense to respond by so if i felt pain hurt people may hurt people mm-hmm. right oh yeah if you hit me then my response may be to hit you back and maybe yeah. even harder put a bible in there and now i have the authoritative voice of god that says you're wrong so if you tell me i'm wrong i can hit back harder because not only am i right but I got God who's backing me. Mm-hmm. So now I'm slapping you with the Bible. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's like dangerous. So, so just the power of the pause is so important in the life I of a believer. Yeah. Just hit pause for a second. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And um, Galatians 5, when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, you know, if you read the verses right after it's Galatians 5, 22, you keep reading and it's like around 24, 25. It's like, so let us keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it's so the Holy Spirit is always going to be that gentle, long suffering, temperate, you know, uh, love, all that. But we're also commanded to be as his image bearers. Right. Who've mm-hmm. been filled now with his spirit. We're carriers of that that image. But if you never listen to him what before you start do? talking, what good? So God yeah. has given us the ultimate, you know, life changing power. And we're opting out of his wisdom and revelation yeah. and illumination and choosing just to respond with the book. Because the book is right and you're wrong, so let me tell you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's dangerous. Yeah, I think uh, you know, and we're gonna. I, I don't mean to give a spoiler alert, but I am. You know, we're getting ready to do a series here in a, a, I think a few weeks and months, uh, talking about the wise, the foolish, and the evil. And this really helped me when it comes to our culture today. Right? Mm-hmm. Proverbs lists three types of people. That's it. <laughs> they're wise people, mm-hmm. they're foolish people, and they're evil people. Mm-hmm. The evil people have already made up their mind. Mm-hmm. It's oh, So to respond to evil mm-hmm. is to literally cast your pearl before swine. Mm-hmm. It is entering into a game 
that immediately puts the foolish people in a place that they don't even know where to go because they're just watching two sides just go at it. Mm -hmm. Then there's the foolish who God desperately wants to turn and be wise. Mm -hmm. But so often we're getting stuck yelling at evil people Mm -hmm. that we're not reaching out to the foolish people so that they can come to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then you got the wise people who are the carriers of the kingdom, the carriers Mm -hmm. of the gospel. We got to recognize that this is where we're at play and how we speak, Mm -hmm. what we say matters. And I love this whole thought process because it's so interesting to me that, you know, God, Jesus never backed down from the truth. Not once. He shared some of the craziest, hardest things ever. So in church world today, what we actually have are people not declaring the truth because they don't understand how to let the Holy Spirit govern their tone. Mm. That's good. And, and, it, and so we get to this place. No, we have to declare the truth, guys. If we don't, I mean, where's truth at? It's, it's not in just the moral hearts of men, right. you know? Yeah. It, we have to declare the truth. But our tone mm. has to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit yeah. because the Holy Spirit then becomes the motivation. And so anyway, I, 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 it's a big deal. I, I had a lot of fun speaking the message. I had a lot of fun talking about it because I really think that, that, that it's something that that gives life to us when we begin to enter into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I liked how you, um, you transitioned towards the end of the message to Second Corinthians 5, which talks about how we are uh, Christ's ambassadors, that we've been given the message of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. So we're not only carrying God's image and His promise, but we're also carrying His message. Yeah. Um, and so I think the, a great question for us to unpack is what does it look like in our culture today to be a carrier of the message of reconciliation. Mm. You know, I, I don't know which message it was. You know how my messages are right now. They, they grow hair as they go. But uh, <laughs> one, of them, one of them that day, I ended with just saying, come back to God. That's what the message yeah, is. Yes. Like, just come back. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the Old Testament. You look at Jonah. I mean, what a beautiful picture yeah. of where we find ourselves today. Mm-hmm is that Jonah was so mad at a region and a Mm -hmm. people group because of what the history was Mm -hmm. that he didn't want to actually see reconciliation. Right. He didn't want to see them come back to God. He he didn't want it to be an option. The irony was he had been redeemed from what the Bible calls in the belly of the the fish. It was actually like hell. Right. And he had been spat out from the belly and given a new chance but isn't that i mean that that's us too yeah we you know but that's we, because we find it's so hard to love even though yeah god's we were, been so loving yeah. yeah but the reason was is because part of god's plan and jonah knew this was not the people of nineveh nineveh being reconciled to jonah mm. right they, it, not, nowhere in there was was any message <laughs> yeah. of hey ninevites y'all come back to the jewish people and say right. you're sorry yeah what the message was is come back to God. Yeah, that's good. And I think that there's a lot of times that what we do is we add to mm-hmm. what reconciliation right. is. It means you know you got to come reconcile with me, so then I can yeah be okay with you reconciling with God. Mm-hmm. When it's actually sometimes we need people to be reconciled. No, not sometimes we need people to be reconciled mm-hmm. to God, and then the Holy Spirit begins to take care of the place with the yeah. reconciliation with each other. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the, the message that we have in culture today is come back to God. We keep trying to find unity around issues mm-hmm. that will not be found yeah. without the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So we need to stop trying to make unity happen and start declaring come back to Jesus Mm-hmm. And in finding Jesus, then the Spirit of God does what only He can do. Yeah, that'll preach all day long. Yeah, that's good. Dude. Good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we too. <laughs> yeah, we decided to <laughs> tackle. Blow it up, Sean! <laughs> just drop nuggets everywhere. <laughs> Boom! So we continued the thought process that we <laughs> carry God's image, and we talked about how that gives each person value. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and, and I think one of the strongest statements you made is that the value of a human isn't determined by possessing a certain level of emotional aptitude, intelligence, 
spirituality or mm-hmm. physicality. Mm-hmm. What makes people valuable above all other created things is our ability to bear God's image. Yes. And we made it clear what we believe as a church about human life, that it starts at conception. Yep. Because, and you said this, I thought this was brilliant. We don't grow into that value Mm -hmm. that we talked about. We inherit it from God as God's image bearer. And you read from Exodus, which I thought was a great um, passage to use. It said, when men strive together and hit a pregnant woman Mm -hmm. so that her children come out, but there is no harm, the one who hit her shall surely be fined, Mm -hmm. as the woman's husband shall impose on him, and he shall pay as the judge determined. But if there is harm, Mm -hmm. then you shall pay life for life. For life. So it's a clear biblical worldview of a child being in the womb as possessing a life. Yeah. What thoughts did you have um, that didn't make it into the message? Because <laughs> with a topic like this. How many words was that message? 2,500. 2,500 words. Everybody, yeah. th- my man literally counts his words. Do I you do. understand? <laughs> I have never counted a word in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Never. So the history behind that is I used to preach for long stretches of time. I would go 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. 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 You, can, you can tell. Yeah. So um, what I realized was if, you know, people can only hear as long as their butts can sit, uh, you know, let me let me tighten it up a little bit so you can fit. Roughly 2,500 words in a 25-minute message. Ooh. So, if, if you were flying. If you were, well, yeah. If you but stick it, right, if you, right I was about to say, yeah, if you yeah. literally stay on the page, right. you can finish it in 25 minutes. Um, but if you add in stuff, which we always going to add mm-hmm. something, you, you're Welcome to the Public Speaking Podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bonus episode. I, there was so much that was in that message. And I think... That passage in Exodus, I think it, it it was the perfect illustration from the Mosaic Law to help us embrace an idea that life is in the womb. It doesn't get any clearer than that for me. Mm-hmm. It, and so it, this has nothing to do with whether a scientist needs to agree with me on what stage the fetus is in. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The offspring of a human yes. is going to be a human being. Mm-hmm. So there is no other species growing within the mother. And it, that's, has, it has value. It, it, right and that yeah. has value at mm-hmm. that very moment. Sure. Another way of looking at this, and this is going to sound really bad, but I think it matters in the context of what people are doing with um, abortions and trimesters and what they're using it for when they're using tissue for science. Mm-hmm. You tell me there's no value in that life because there is no life, but then you value the tissue so you can use it within experiments. Yeah. So they're assigning a value to it for those who don't believe that abortion is more value. than, but it's a, it's a convenience to them. So they're switching what the value is when it comes time for their to defend their argument oh no 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 it's not a life it doesn't have thoughts it, it's it's not walking it's not breathing until the moment it breathes his first breath and all the rest of this then it's not a person then what is it because you're using that substance to bring to, about life to bring about life in people yeah. so at the end of the day what you're saying is since it isn't out of the womb it's less valuable than when it's in the difference of 30 seconds of when it was mm-hmm. in the womb and a mother births it that difference of 30 seconds what is what they're saying makes the difference in the value of that life and what we're saying is from a biblical point of view there's no way there's no way and we provided so much in that message and you can listen to it but there's no way that you can come up with that conclusion well i thought you did a great job of breaking it down not from opinion but yes. just scripture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's why I love the message so much. And I, I told you after is one of your best because I, I just thought the how you navigated this is what God's truth is. Mm-hmm. It says you can have your opinion all day long. Yes. But this is what God's word says. Yeah. And it's clear through scripture that God and you said this, that God's concern and creative power extend to prenatal life. Prenatal life. You can't argue with it when you mm-hmm. read some of these key passages i think think, isn't that the power of the series i mean the power of the series is that we're not 
we're not making political statements. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not here trying to even respond to something. Mm-hmm. We're just simply here right. saying this is what the Bible says. Yes. You know, and, and so when you stand on the truth of God's word, then you begin to understand that nothing can stand against it. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. It, you know, when we stand on opinion, it can. Mm-hmm. We actually when we stand on our own opinion, we open the door for argument. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we stand on the conviction of God's word, we just don't because it doesn't matter what you say. Right. I'm not moving off of it. It doesn't mm-hmm. even matter intellectually if you make sense. I'm mm-hmm. still not moving off of it. Absolutely. Because I've made a decision that this mm-hmm. is what sets the course for yeah. my life. Mm-hmm. That's, good. That's what we're teaching is like some of these things we feel the need to try to win an argument over. And right. there's no argument to be had right. because this is simply the fact right. this doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Because it's the Bible written by the Holy Spirit through mm-hmm. mankind. Mm-hmm. There's a lot in here that does not make sense, but mm-hmm. I still choose to believe it because it's based in faith, yeah. not based yeah. in logic. Yeah, I, even though a lot of it makes sense. I think I think, <laughs> I think that's the thing about truth is that that truth is this thing that's like you, you can have your facts, but truth trumps facts. That's right. Come and on, and and at the end of the day, when you consider. Um, the the power of God's truth, and, and you're talking about standing on the word of God. Jesus is Lord. That's right. For instance, He's not going to be. He's he not is. going to be. That's he, right. You know, and I know sometimes we use the phrase, "Hey, will you make Jesus the Lord of your life?" Mm-hmm. Technically, He is Lord, regardless to if you're choosing that or not. Now, there is a moment you're acknowledging it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you're so surrender His lordship. Exactly. Not now, I'm yeah. going to submit to it. Yeah. I'm going to submit to right. what to this truth. Yes. But just because we don't like that truth or we think that there should be many ways to God instead of one way, you know, and all these other opinions that people have at the end of the day, what he's looking for you to do is confess the truth. Right. You agree with a reality that already exists. Every he knee is Lord. Every knee will bow. And every tongue is going to end up yes. confessing the truth. Can That's you right. imagine that day when everything, all spirits, it's all absolute. created beings, Satan and all the rest of the fallen angels, they're going to bow. And they're going to confess the exact same words all over. The question is not whether we're going to have to agree with the truth. The challenge is to agree with it now while you have time, Mm -hmm. because one day you will anyway. But the problem was you you have chosen not to have a relationship with God for an eternity. That's right. Right. Right? Because you wanted to believe your own truth in his life. And I think that that's the the same problem that we run into when it comes to um, the argument of choice. Well, it's, it's just a choice that I'm making to opt out of whatever's growing within a mm-hmm. woman. And it's to say that that's not a person, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'm reminded even when you're talking, you know, the Bible clearly says don't enter into meaningless disputes and arguments mm-hmm. and vain arguments. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we're trying to discuss mm-hmm. that we shouldn't be discussing because the Bible is very clear about it. Mm-hmm. It becomes more of we need to preach the truth mm-hmm. in the tone of God, which I you agree. did an amazing job, and let it be what it is mm-hmm. instead of trying to talk people into it. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict of sin. It is right. not That's mine. Right. Mm-hmm. And so That's recognizing huge. that when we just declare the truth, now we're partnering with what the Holy Spirit wants mm-hmm. to do. And, and to that point, I do want to say this. Like when I was preparing for it, I mean, I knew what I was walking into, obviously, but in my brain, I think about each person that's going to be sitting in the room yeah. and and I before I ever deliver something to people I want to lift it up to the Lord and say God this message is a worship offering to you do you approve you know is this something that you're like all right I'm good with what's going to be said yeah. and that means does it align with truth mm-hmm. how it falls obviously I, I do have some part in the delivery but ultimately it's God who's going to give the increase it's God who's going to bring that thing to life in people's you know uh, hearts in their individual unique circumstances so in my brain there was this tension that constantly was there as i'm preparing to share this because it was like how is it going to be received and yeah. who all will be there yeah. and who's listening because you never know we got thousands of people listening well wow, that's to our messages i think that's you know yeah that's the human yeah. aspect of delivering a message yeah you know what i mean so there was this thought that constantly kind of that I fell back on which was number one is the holy spirit's responsibility yeah. to take this seed right mm-hmm. and to 
increase it and to convict people if they need to be convicted right. and to comfort people mm-hmm. and all that. And so I had to decrease and I constantly just reminded myself, well, this is the truth. And if it's the truth, then it's going to lead to freedom in people's lives. Yeah. And so, you know, That's good. I, I think with that particular message, the response that I've gotten from so many people has been phenomenal in that they want to now proactively seek a way to become an advocate yes, yeah. for me too um for life well and i love the way you ended the message with what do we do mm-hmm. what are some practical yeah. ways we can respond and so we respond in love to those who have considered abortion or who have had an abortion but this is where going back to tone our tone matters mm-hmm. yeah yeah i, I want to share this little story of it, it was in between the nine and the it's 11 so a.m service and it just wrecked my whole existence um sometimes after messages you know we go out we always go out and and we connect with our people and in between these messages i was kind of like whoo this one's tough Mm -hmm. because my brain is somewhere else but i'm gonna go out you know and so i go outside and a lady comes up to me with her son and she just she breaks out into tears and i was like oh god you know i'm trying to hold it together i got one more service to go (laughs) the next thing you know she was like i had no clue what you were going to talk about today but i had put this shirt on my son and the son looked at the shirt and he's he held it up and he said what does it say mama and and it was hashtag not broken Mm -hmm. and he has on headphones because he has a lot of epileptic seizures and the noise may get to him but he's able to sit in services with Uh the headphones and you know you can tell that you know i think he's autistic um and so she just it comforted her and it comforted her family to know that his value yeah is so important to god his journey isn't the same as mine but the way god sees him it's not less than it's not less than Mm -hmm. yep learning to love differently for us is complex Mm -hmm. but god loves him fully and the way those parents have to love is unique yeah but i i know these parents i look at them there's not a regret on them for Mm -hmm. having their son and it was just like both of them his dad came up to me later on gave me a big old hug and they were just almost like speechless and just i'm bawling at that point you know and in my mind i was just like dude i never would have I didn't see that coming mm-hmm. necessarily, but the way that I think all of us needed uh, a healing, you know, when it yeah. came to that area, I thought that that was so significant, but that blessed my life. So I just wanted to share that. That's awesome, awesome man. Yeah. So week three, we all needed a breather. So we talked about <laughs> rest. No, I think it's awesome. I, I, I talk about being a carrier. I talk about rest. I, I give Sean all the hard stuff. <laughs> You talked about taking a nap. Yeah. I talked about taking a nap, but I gave him the hard stuff so I could take a nap the entire series. I'm just relaxed. I'm very relaxed. Good. <laughs> so in week three, and I, I, I think it's so important when you talk about carrying the image of God and, and being created in the image of God, you can't talk about that without talking about the rhythm that God created us to operate in. Um, and, and so I, I would say it this way, an Imago Day life, and this is similar to what you said in the message, an Imago Day life should be defined by rest, not stress. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. And in our society, everybody's stressed. Mm-hmm. Yep. You can see it on people's faces. Driving down the road, you can mm-hmm. see it on people's faces. Stress is a, it feels like, is a way of life. Mm-hmm. And I think, I know the Holy Spirit is saying there is a better way. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what you were speaking to. And it's, I think it's an important topic for us to discuss. And we've talked about Sabbath and rest on the podcast before. But I think in our culture of busy, it needs to be repeated. Yeah. Um, anything you want to add to the message? You know, I, I, I spoke about it in a much different way. I think I've, I've, I said this in the messages that the other times that I've shared it, I think I've really shared it from a legalistic standpoint. I think there's been a lot of truth in what I shared. I just looked more at the Mosaic Law with it than I did about the creation story and Hebrews chapter 4. 
And I, I really think that we have to understand that this is God's gift to mankind. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we're holy. I, I, in fact, I, because we take a Sabbath, I, I think it's that place that we're able to remember the goodness of mm -hmm. God. And I do think that out of that message came a place that as Christians, we're meant to ha live from that place of rest in all things. And, and I'm not saying that we don't get stressed out sometimes. That, that would be uh, more bondage than anything. Because there, there are times that I get stressed mm -hmm. out. There's times and seasons. But recognizing um, that most of the time when we're in that place, we, we have to understand that God's gone before us. He's behind us and mm -hmm. he's beside us. And so there's nothing that we're facing that's a shock to him. Mm -hmm. And so really living into that. And I love that thought process about that I can be in rest because Jesus is working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a really powerful concept that it's not just about resting in the finished work of Jesus, but the Jesus that we worship is working mm -hmm. right now on behalf of me before the Father. Interceding. Yeah. Interceding and, and recognizing that that's an ongoing work and that he will not rest until I come into completion with mm -hmm. him and we sit down for the marriage supper of the Lamb and enjoy a great celebration together. And so... Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a really powerful thing that anywhere we are at any moment of the day. And I just want to encourage those that listen, you know, the, the whole thought process of legalism and how we read the scriptures. Most of our Bible was written to the Jews. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that so often we read the Old Testament and we, we view it like it's written to us we receive the benefit of seeing Jesus from beginning to end. So we see the types and shadows. But recognizing that some of the things that are written in the Old Testament, they weren't written to us, they were written to the Jewish people, mm -hmm. so that Jesus would be revealed to us. Yes. And, and that changes everything, it guys, does. when you read that, because now it doesn't become a bunch of things to jump through. Mm -hmm. Now, as I asked recently about the Sabbath, you know, and I, I, I said, if Jesus was here today, mm -hmm. he would worship on Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not because he would be mad at me for worshiping on Sunday. Right. It's because he's Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jesus would go down the street with me and he would sit while I ate. Sam Jones barbecue, <laughs> but he would not eat Sam Jones barbecue right. because he's Jewish. Yeah, Jesus loved his culture. Mm -hmm. He just didn't expect people who weren't in his culture to live in that culture. That's right. So recognizing that as Gentiles, we don't have to be circumcised mm -hmm. to be a believer. Mm -hmm. right. There's a freedom that comes, but it doesn't mean that we. Uh, we don't need to learn about the culture that Jesus came from because in discovering that culture, we discover more of who Jesus is. Yes. And it reveals it to us. So when you take the Sabbath, don't take it legalistically. Mm -hmm. Take the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't live underneath that bondage. Don't make it something else to do. Mm -hmm. But enjoy the rest. Yeah. You know? That was so well said. I mean, really, well, that, was, that was you, great, man. brother. I was, I, was, I was like, wow. Well, you know, it's funny because I, mean, <laughs> and, and I have been asked a lot about some of the things that we do lately from great people asking it and they have that religious oh, mindset you. Okay. you know what i'm saying yeah uh you know and i think that's some of the things that we you know i think i talked about the message about one of the rhythms that we see in scripture is even communion mm -hmm. you know and recognizing like and i had somebody recently they just asked it's a great question they're like you know what about unbelievers taking communion and in my response, and I'd never seen it, it was kind of like the Holy Spirit dropped mm -hmm. this in my spirit. First off, that's a misunderstanding of the Scripture. Mm -hmm. So they were being gluttonous in their taking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that they were drinking right. judgment on themselves because they were unbelievers. They, mm -hmm. were, they, were, they were not handling it correctly amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. But I asked them, I said, you know, do you think the disciples were saved the first time they took communion with mm -hmm. Jesus? And they were like, what, what do you mean? I said, no, no, no. John chapter 20 is when the Holy Spirit was breathing mm. the disciples and they were saved. That's actually really the good. The first time that they took communion, there were a bunch of heathens on their way to hell because Jesus hadn't even died and was resurrected. And I yet. always like to point out that Judas was sitting there when they took That is him. true. Yes. And so recognizing that Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is the Jesus, one. Jesus stuck his hand in front of Judas' mouth. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> not <laughs> you. This isn't for you. Not yeah. <laughs> that is that's for, really good. Yeah. So we, we, we have to recognize that there's a lot of religion in us. <laughs> yes. 
when Jesus, the whole thing that Jesus showed us was, I'm going to go eat and drink with sinners. Yeah. Because he was inviting them to the table yeah. right. with his disciples. That's really Same good. is for us, man. We yeah, just got to get past I, the legalism. I, just, I can't see Jesus turning someone away from the table no. when, when his whole, the message of reconciliation is. Come, come back. Yeah, well, we just talked about it yeah. for you. <laughs> come back to God. Yeah. Come back to God. Be reconciled. So, anyway, yeah. don't don't do that legalistic stuff, man. Get over that stuff. Let's go. Yeah. So week four, we uh, talked about, and, and honestly, I think discussing sexuality is such an important topic mm-hmm. as we're talking about being made in the image of God. Mm-hmm. Gender is actually established in Genesis. Genesis 1 27 you shared this in the message so God created human beings in his own image Mm -hmm. in the imago Dei the image of God he created them male Male and and female female, he created them and God blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and govern it Mm -hmm. and so you mentioned the law of first mention and Mm -hmm. I think it's important Mm -hmm. to establish basically what the law of first mention is when we say that we're talking about to understand a particular word or doctrine we first have to find the first place in Scripture that that word or doctrine is revealed mm-hmm. and study that passage. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about marriage, sexuality, all that, you have to go back to Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Yes. You have it's to go back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the guiding principles of however that word or that thought should be focused on from there on out is governed by the law first mentioned, ultimately. Yeah. So when we go back to the very beginning, you have... I, I I love this picture because first off you have like these pairs of trinities. So for instance, mm-hmm. law first mentioned Genesis one and one in the beginning God. Next statement created. So from here on out, we know that God is the author of creation. Everything. Everything. Even if, and I think this is important. Even if it never mentions that again in the Bible. Exactly. It's established at the beginning. It's established. Yep. It's hands down, it's done. From here on out, he's Elohim. First the God who matters. the first sentence matters, right? Yep. And 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 what's interesting, even about that first sentence, when we're thinking about the law of first mentions, is it says, In the beginning God created into the heavens and the earth, and it was without form and void, and darkness was and and then it says, And God said Mm-hmm. Let there be light, and there was light. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Mm-hmm. In the first two verses of the Bible, what do you get? The Trinity. Yep. yep. So, what else do you learn about God? The Spirit was moving on the water. That's right. God was saying something. Mm-hmm. And what happens when you get to John one and one? Yep. In the beginning was the was Word. The word. Yep. So God spoke through Christ and the Holy Spirit on the earth. What do you see in the New Testament? Same God thing. sent the Word. To heal us of our destructive habits right. and behaviors. Yep. And guess what Jesus did? He sent the Spirit right. to now work within the earth and heal what it is that's broken yep. within the world to bring it to shape, yep. to Christ's likeness. So you get the Trinity from the beginning. So now then God, later on in the same chapter, what does he do? He creates man in his own image and likeness. You see three. Mm-hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What happens in the first wedding? God brings the woman to the man. And you have God. You have Adam and you have Adam. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and I did not say that wrong. You have God, Adam, and Adam. Man was one. There was yep. one name between two different genders, which is very important. Yeah. So there was one shared name, mm-hmm. and you had two distinct, unique individuals yes. and their specific gender. Right. And with that gender was going given to marriage class, <laughs> marriage class. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and with that gender came a responsibility, yes. a commandment, even be fruitful multiply. and multiply. That's right. Rule the earth and subdue it. So who's ruling the earth? The family unit of a husband and a wife who have children who stamp the earth with the Imago Dei. Mm-hmm. If God wanted or would bless a same-sex relationship or even sex outside of the context of marriage, it would have been mentioned within the first family structure. It would have to be. The problem with it is the moment that you make it a same-sex relationship, it would immediately cancel out the God-given purpose and mandate for human beings because a man and a man can't birth a child. That's right. You could mankind would immediately 
falls short of their God given spoken purpose. Now, here's what's really important. Out of all that that was just said, when God when God says something, go back to Genesis one law first mentioned when God says a thing, it happens as he spoke it. That's and right. it's good. Yeah. So then when God says to man and woman, right, when he says to the family unit, be fruitful and multiply, he was also empowering them to be able to fulfill that function. Right. right. Yeah. So that means the only one that he would say is good in his sight is the one that's a union between a man and a woman who who will fulfill that purpose of ruling and subduing in yeah. the earth and being able to be fruitful and multiply that's right. so what we what we get right there is hands down it's a it's a biblical view on what god thinks about sexuality mm -hmm. that any form of sex any form of it outside of the context of a man and a woman who've been joined together by God yeah. is considered sexual immorality That's right. and any relationship of the same sex or anything else that people want to come up with it's it's short of the glory of right. what it is that God gave when he gave the mandate of marriage the family unit and sex within the context yes, of marriage very yeah. important well, and I, I think, and I've, you know, I've heard people say, well, Jesus doesn't, so they go back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus, Jesus doesn't, doesn't say anything specifically <laughs> forbid certain sexual sins. Yeah. But that's why I think the law of first mention is so important. Yes. Because if you consider that, Jesus doesn't have to directly call out all of these sexual sins. Right. Specifically, because it's already been established. Yes. What sex is should be yeah what that looks like between a man and a woman in marriage it's implied yes. within and you talked about that in the message it's implied within the original design yes and designated purpose like jesus wasn't making a new um when he, when he comes in and we talk about the law being fulfilled through christ that's not freedom for us to go live however we want yeah. so i think that's the first abuse that people are doing in saying well in the new testament you know what I mean? It's as if to say that Jesus gives us this freedom to do whatever we want. As, as as, though he, as, he doesn't cancel out the old. He right. fulfills it. Right. He fulfills yeah. it and then empowers us to live it. Right. Which which is very significant for us to recognize. Which he calls us to a higher standard. Yes. There's nowhere in the scriptures that Jesus calls us to a less yeah. yes. standard. So in the Old Testament, yeah. if you had adultery, yes. there was an issue. In the New Testament, Jesus says, if you look on a woman with lust in your heart, in your heart. because Jesus is about your motivation, not just your action. Yes. So it's a combination. In the Old Testament, it's more about your action. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, it's about your motivation yes. connected to your action. Yes. And those things are so powerful to recognize. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't a less than. This is what the Holy Spirit empowers right. me to do, because now i got the Spirit of Almighty God living inside of me, mm -hmm. empowering me to be better than I can be by myself. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you We're know, gonna preach up in here. Yeah. You know what I'm no, that's for real. Yo, baby. Well, I think I think that <laughs> and you mentioned this earlier, but I think if you're a Christian and you're listening to this, we have to realize that we are in uncharted waters as Americans. And and it's 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 I feel like it's new for Americans. But we have to remember that we're not going to agree with the world. Right. And they're not going to agree with us. They're not yep. going to agree with us. Yep. And as a society, we're, you can see it happening, and it's already happening across our nation. We're, re, we're trying to redefine what God has already established, mm -hmm. law first mentioned. And so at some point, we're getting there rapidly. The church and the world around us are not going to agree. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's new for Americans. It's new because yeah. it, we feel like we've kind of had a past that mm – -hmm. American culture is the same as Christian culture, mm -hmm. and it no longer is. I had somebody ask me recently, you know, what what are you going to do? Um, so I'm going to get in the weeds. Is that all right? Can we just Good, get in the yeah, weeds? Go for we're, it. We're, on, we're on a podcast. We <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that bothers me about the pandemic, and, and I don't I don't have great answers. So when I'm getting ready to say this, the, I'm, I'm, I'm opening up to my heart and my mind what I'm processing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And it's simply this. If we bow our knee and close our doors over a pandemic, right? then what happens when the government says, I can't talk about yep. marriage? Mm -hmm. It's the tension. It's it's all, all pastors, and I'm not saying what's the right line. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, 
the line is God's word. What I am saying is right now the American church is having to define what line is it not going to cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. where, where are we going to say no? Mm -hmm. And what has concerned me is if we are willing to bow our knee so easily, then we're going to see the road ahead of us very bumpy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had somebody ask me, what happens if the government, you know, says that you can't preach this? I said, well, I mean, I've already made up my mind I'm going to, so it doesn't really matter. There's nothing now that they are going to say or do that mm -hmm. will shift what we say or do. Right. Because we have entered into territory that obviously the alignment of culture, the system of this world, does not align with the church. I think that means the greatest awakening is in front of us. Mm -hmm. Because here's the deal, guys. You, you got to understand, the world's way does not work. Yeah, It doesn't. Absolutely. So the evidence, the proof will be in the pudding. Yes. <laughs> and so it's just the fact of will we be consistent enough so, much so that when it doesn't work, they got somewhere to run because that's what takes place. Mm -hmm. I came home. That's because so I knew my daddy was consistent mm -hmm. and he never backed down and called my sin righteousness. Yeah. This is a moment yeah. that we get to be the light. It That's just so might suck being the light for a little while because there's going to be a lot of people that don't agree with it. There's so much that you said that I'm just jumping on the inside. OK, first off, think about the early church. Everything was against. Them. Absolutely. That's yeah. why I said it's new for us. It's yeah, not yeah. new for the church. Yeah, this is this. And they it, exploded. It, they, yeah. And they because they were willing to like they were to society around them they were like rebels yeah. but it was something so attractive in it but it was also working for them mm -hmm. like these people's lives were radically changed it worked it worked <laughs> and so that's why when you were saying it in my brain i was like this yeah. is this is yeah. so real we we're not and this goes back to what you were saying a few moments ago where people are debating stuff and they're trying to you know find a philosophical pathway to land on what we think truth is and be agreeants you know what i'm saying rather than saying god said it's truth so it is and therefore we need to not bend god down to mm. what we want to see yeah, as true right. but we need to raise our lifestyles up to our theology yep. instead of pulling our theology down to the lifestyle we want come on it's good so was talking to um, um pastor jimmy evans and he said this he he had Oh, say Talk. that. Yeah, that's as good. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. This thing, he said, when when we say something like it's sacred, it means that God is in it, mm. that God is involved in it. And when he said that, I was just like, whoa, it was so simple, but uh -huh. it made so much yeah. sense. Like he has something to say about it because he has a hand in it. Yeah, that's good. He created it. So he has the right to dictate exactly how it works. And the good news is whenever you get uh, an iron, you get a laptop, you get food, they tell you, here's the way you should consume this. Here's the way you should use this product. When you use it according to the owner's manual, it works best. Mm -hmm. When you choose to take an iron because you think that hot iron inside of water will make a hot tub, and you stick that in there, stick yourself into it and watch what happens. It doesn't work. You're going to get a shocking experience. And, and what we're having in culture is you're having society that's basically waving his fist in the face of God and saying, nah, we don't want it your way. We think it's a little antiquated. And, and so let's keep the God part because we like that. But let's modify what he has to say about things. Right. And you end up um, making a mess. One of the things he was saying after that was that like there were some studies done within society and what led to the downfall of every great major society, those that went and conquered territory and built it up and they had kingdoms. The thing that broke down those civilizations, first and foremost, was the destruction of the family. Mm -hmm. It was when they began to dismantle what, what it the was. family structure was. Well, and that goes back to what we shared in the last series. That's what what paul was talking about in romans mm -hmm. he traced the the what what happens when sin goes unchecked yes. unrestrained what happens in a society and he traces it all the way down to sexual immorality sin. yes when that breakdown happens when they deconstruct it and it's within every society mm -hmm. and you can study it for yourself what led to their downfall they were so mighty how did they fall it was they rebelled against the structure that god had in place so this isn't about us being like more right than somebody else. Yeah. This is about 
That's right. The safest way for us to survive and thrive as a society. And in that, when we do it God's way, it really is what's best. It works. That's good. And I love that conversation. And we'll look at the last few parts of this series next month. And if you missed any parts of the first four weeks of this series, don't forget to check them out on the Open Door app available on any app store. Well, I want to thank you for being a part and for inviting others to watch or listen to this content if it encouraged you. Until next time, God bless.